anybody that knows me better get a visual image of this. <laughs> okay. Le um, who in here thinks that they're indicator species? Ladies, can I get you to put both your hands in the air? Now wave them like you just don't care. <laughs> Kidding. Put both of your thumbs up, pointing back to you. Yeah. So we are all indicator species. We gauge conditions in certain environments. Women are taskmasters. We hold majority responsibility when it comes to childcare, to household shopping, on top of full-time jobs. So when you see all types of women managing their daily lives and they're hopping on bikes, something right in that city is happening. You see, I view thriving cities by how many women are riding. One out of every four people riding bikes is a woman. It's low here. And Superior Strategy seems to be trying to answer the ageless question. What do women want? I know, in the realm of biking. It's convenience, it's infrastructure, and it's confidence. Now, this shit is not convenient. Okay? This is stressful to me. It's hardcore and it screams sport. And not every woman is an athlete. We have to move beyond the vision of the bike being seen as an athletic sport only for the physically fit and into the vision of the bike being seen as a choice just to move around freely. and it starts with clothing. I started a project two years ago where I photograph every one of my outfits for the month of May. May is National Bike Month. And I post these photos for everyone to see. Because I want to reiterate to everybody that anything in your closet you wear, you can ride your bike in. The girls empowerment program that I started, Girls in Gear, so not only are these girls learning about bike mechanics and urban design, you better believe they're taking note at what I'm showing up in. So at a young age, I want these girls to know that the bike isn't for a specific body type. It's for an every body type, and clothing helps with that. And then if you want to just throw away those reasons and lay down the trump card, you're never bringing sexy back in Lycra, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so recently, um, I was in San Francisco, and I was standing on the corner of Market and Sixth, and I was taking photographs, and I was wiping the drool from my face at the waves of people riding their bikes. It was great. Then I specifically honed in on how many women were riding bikes. I was so pumped, and my heart was fluttering. It was so exciting. And then I remember I got really discouraged. I got really frustrated, <clears throat> and I thought to myself, how the hell are these women different here than my women in Columbus? We're riding the same bikes, we're dressed the same, we're going the same speeds, and then it slapped me in the face. It's the infrastructure and how this infrastructure has been designed. You see, the design of bike infrastructure must seduce in order to get more women to ride. Let me give you an example. Just yell out, top or bottom, I don't mean in that context, <laughs> which one of these images seduces you to want to ride your bike? <laughs> so, you can put your hand You can put your hand in your back pocket if you want to, right? You can ride 6 miles an hour if you want to because you don't have to feel obligated to speed from the 2000 pounds of steel rolling up quickly behind you. The top image has created an atmosphere that brings comfort that brings low stress and a high sense of safety. Big reason why more women aren't riding bikes is safety. I view and I feel safety differently than you, than you, and I'm not alone. Everyone has to feel comfortable navigating and participating in city life, not just half of the population. So when I have infrastructure that is designed with me in mind and it conveniently connects me throughout my city, then the bike just becomes another integrated choice to move freely. It's just second nature. 
So what could Columbus look like? Boom. <laughs> I look forward to the vision of our city truly designing infrastructure with the mind frame of 8 to 80. Meaning, when you can seduce all of these faces behind me, from an eight-year-old to an 80-year-old who want to ride, to feel confident to hop on their bikes at any given time, and ride any streets that we want, then Columbus will finally become a thriving, bike-friendly city. Thank you.